Hello and welcome back to the Would You Bend Mouldings YouTube channel. This week I turned this rustic blanket box into the perfect statement piece for a home. I use the Would You Bend Moulding X1001, which is, by the way, exclusive to Dixiebel in the USA. As you can see, this is the only moulding that I use for this piece. I just used quite a few of them in a repetitive pattern, creating like a frilly skirting to the base of the piece. I think it's amazing how one simple applique can create such a dramatic effect. All Would You Bend mouldings can be sanded, drilled and distressed, and when heated, they become moldable. Our new and improved third generation mouldings are more compact, making them more durable. They also retain the heat longer, giving you more open time to work with during the design and application process. And back to basics. When applying any Would You Bend mouldings, we always follow the five step rules. Step one, applying heat. First, we apply heat so that the moulding becomes flexible. Depending on the size of the moulding, here we have a big one, so it can take a bit longer to become flexible. Step two, apply a good quality wood glue and spread this with a paintbrush to cover the entire footprint of the Would You Bend mouldings. You can also use your finger, taking extra care around the edges. Step three, press the moulding firmly to the desired surface. Here you can clean up any excess glue with water and or a paintbrush, Q-tip or wet wipe. Step four, apply a little more heat whilst the Would You Bend moulding is in situ. This is the time to make any further adjustments before the next step. And step five, Finally, we press once again to get rid of any air trapped behind the moulding and to really consolidate the Would You Bend moulding to the designated substrate. I wanted the bottom of the blanket box to be covered in this beautiful floral applique. To ensure the applique flowed across the bottom, I heated the moulding. Always keep your heat appliance moving, especially when using a heat gun. It helps disperse the heat throughout the piece evenly and prevents you from scorching your Would You Bend moulding. If you don't feel confident with a heat gun, it is a power tool after all. You can use a hairdryer. It just takes a little longer to heat up. You can also lay your Would You Bend mouldings on a sausage griddle at a medium temperature. Please do not eat them though. Then I used a crafting knife to cut the moulding to the desired angle. Here I'm playing with the pieces to get them to fit in nicely to create that continuous flow of florals. There are no rules to the placement of Would You Bend, it is entirely up to you and your imagination. Wherever I cut, I sanded down so that the joining between the moulding was smooth and seamless. Doesn't it look like it's just one big piece of frilly wood you bend? One of the challenges of this piece was the shape of the original furniture. As you can see, this piece has curved side panels, grooves and lips that we did not want to cover up. We wanted to enhance them. Time for painting. So, I started off with an ombre effect using Dixiebel chalk mineral paints, beginning with Midnight Sky along the bottom. As I painted over the mouldings, I used a stippling technique. This ensured complete coverage over the intricate grooves of the mouldings. I then started to blend some Mason Dixon grey around the edges. The colours worked fantastically together, don't you think? I 
I didn't want this piece to be too dark though, so I started to blend some tea rose where the light naturally hits the curves of the blanket box. I have to admit that Dixie Bowl paints are one of the easiest I've used for blending. I usually have a brush for each colour I'm using for the blend and use alternatively as I'm going. The Dixie Bell Minis are great for this. I usually have a clean one on hand as well, which I use towards the end of the coat I'm applying. It finishes off the gradient without contaminating adjacent areas. If the paint begins to dry too fast on the surface or gets a little sticky, I always have a water mister on hand to lightly spritz the surface. This helps the paint glide and blend easier across the surface. That goes for especially if I'm working in a warm environment where paints tend to dry relatively fast. On both front edges, I added two strips of Would You Bend Trim TR710. This gave a subtle embellishment to the piece without taking away from the Would You Bend floral skirting I'd created on the bottom. Again on the front, I repeated the blend pattern with the darker colours around the edges on both pseudo drawers, highlighting the centre of the panels with tea rose and pink champagne. To add an element of luxury, I used the Dixie Bell Victorian Damask stencil and lightly stippled over with a mix of the Dixie Bell paints I'd use for the blend. I also added a little touch of rosé from the Moonshine Metallics range. Look at that effect, isn't it fabulous? I also used the rosé to highlight the mouldings by dry brushing lightly with my brush semi-loaded. As you can see, this adds more depth to the piece. I finished the top with Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain. It left such a smooth and shiny surface when it was dry. The handles were reattached. I dry brushed over using the Moonshine Metallics in the colour Rosé again. It really brings the piece together, don't you think? And there you have it, a stylish, sleek, bespoke piece, perfect for your home. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and follow us on all our social media channels. Stay tuned for next week's video. Bye.